get invited by aliens to go um, take part in the alien race. Well, everybody's really offended, you know, all the politicians, the scientists, right, uh, religious leaders, that how could our first activity with aliens be racing, right? How stupid. But all, of course, of course, corporate Earth rises to the occasion because they want to sell their stuff to all the aliens, right? So they put together a team, we get zapped off to an alien planet. Part of the thing is that we have to uh, race uh, bioengineered creatures from the available DNA on our planet. And so we had to design, we, we picked three categories to make it better for a video game, more doable. So bipeds, quadrupeds, and flyers. And um, these are some of the alien riders and some of the other background characters. And let's see, what else? Basically, that's pretty much it. Of course, you know, there's saving the world and all that stuff. It's a typical story plot line. But fun thing for me was bioengineered race creatures with crazy aliens riding on them. That was really fun. This is our main bad guy um, on the left and his sidekick. Uh, on the right, and so you can see that's where that, in case, that's where that head went to put it on that little body. Oh, by the way, the body was an onion as well. Um, and so if the stripes came from, I should think of the onion. Uh, the other guy on the left is just regular old school drawing and painting. Uh, this is some centillion diva writer, <laughs> on her, you know, crazy sort of pelican dog horse poodle. <laughs> 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 um, these are some other riders. So here's like a human rider in his, his suit, uh, having a little dialogue with the guy on the left. Uh, the guy on the left is fine. You can find his head on my blog. It's a crushed, crumbled up piece of craft paper. That's where his head came from. Um, I don't think there's, any, there's no other photo of this stuff here. All the rest is regular drawing and painting in Photoshop. Um, so these are some style tests. Um, so in this book, I had the opportunity to be a bit more illustrative than the vehicle things, and so I took advantage of that. So I did a lot of style tests with uh, Photoshop filters. These all started as black ink pen drawings, like with a brush pen, tiny little thumbnails. And then by scanning them and then running a series of filters, um, I simplified them and found some sort of happy accidents, recolorized them. And then Alien Race, the book, was, was 216 pages. It's kind of a beast. 10 by 10, and there's no white pages in the entire book. It's all toned paper. And um, so lots of toned paper, a lot of really, lots and lots of color. So these are, again, my warm-ups. So I said I went back to trying to do some figurative drawing classes. So I really like this guy's book. Uh, Joe Weatherly has a really nice guide to draw animals. And so you'll see, if you look in his book, you'll see some of these are like literally me following his step-by-steps, right, to try and draw a dog. Well, the difference is I put a rider on my dog, and of course I put a number five on it. Right. <laughs> so, um, super fun, and then I colorized them to get this little woodcut look um, inside Photoshop. But it was really fun to get back to do some you know, figurative stuff, which I used, used to do way before Art Center, actually. And here's a couple more oh, riders. Guess. So, this thing on the right is like a training pig. Awesome. You, uh, it's kind of a pig, not really. Um, but it's a little dangerous. It's like a slippery saddle, right? If you can stand just think like rodeo gone wrong, right? That's uh, kind of that idea. And then this is a maybe a potential character you know, in the movie. It's this big boar. Uh, and that's one of our American or one of the uh, Earthling riders that didn't make the team because he was too pompous. Um, here's just another uh, shot, two quadrupeds. Again, these are the guys that are having the dialogue in that opening shot. So quadrupeds. And everything's, you know, all that we made some uh, early decisions that all the, the aliens should be humanoid um, as so as to relate to them clearly, uh, keep it simple and um, relatable. Um, and then all the color stuff's done in Photoshop, the top are little graphite sketches. Um, and I did, uh, it's, it's really, really bizarre. It took me three years to get this book done uh, because I was too busy doing other things and I ended up doing a lot of the writing and I wanted to do a lot of the artwork, so to squeeze it in, right, it was very difficult. And I ended up drawing for two weekends on this project uh, in three years, and that was it. So I did all these graphite sketches, uh, which is almost a full sketchbook, in over two weekends, maybe five days total. And then it was a lot of painting after that. So a lot of the stuff happened in Photoshop, a lot of painting, which I don't know how many hours or days. I think if we added up and we had to redo it again from start to finish, it probably is only about... Uh, Probably about four months' work um, for there were uh, six of us <laughs> total. Um, all students, by the way. This is all my stuff, but if you get the book, it's all students and myself. Um, this is like a checkpoint or whatever. I don't know. 
and some sort of their paws, and then these centillion guys are running around, and this foreman over here in the lower left is saying, hey, you know, Bolo, get the thing up. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta go. So uh, get out of there before that guy eats you for lunch. Sort of thing. And, uh, but it was fun for me. Again, it was nice, fun figure to paint, put some things in some environments, and um, do a lot of colorful work, create different things in the vehicle stuff. Okay, so now the vehicles. Um, this, all these vehicles that you're about to see are preview pages. A lot of the pages are still work in progress, so there's a lot of um, graphic design needs to be done. Obviously, the text is not put in yet. There are a couple finished pages, and this is now where you start to see some 3D work coming into play. So all these line drawings were done over a really base, simple 3D model, but they started from that Photoshop sketch you ever left. And um, then I blocked out a quick model, then I just drew over the top. And so this is, let's see, it's going to be 176 pages. It, it, they're all game vehicle types of vehicles. Uh, they are four chapters. There's sort of this NASA-inspired aesthetic. There's a military aesthetic. There's a salvage aesthetic. And there's kind of something called pro sport, which is kind of lame at this point. But it's kind of sort of the expected you know, near future vehicles of which this would fall into that category. Um, that's some sci-fi stuff, so I don't even know what chapter this is. This is probably going to be aerospace. Yeah, it says over there. And then I have the text. So aerospace, sci-fi explorers. Now we have different categories. There's sports cars, there's off-road vehicles, and there's this sort of hammer category that would be intended to break down barriers and provide shortcuts, etc. So uh, all this work was done last summer with um, myself and one intern, and um, but I had more than enough work of my own to, I was actually 196 pages and I just cut out 20 pages, so I deleted all the motorcycles, uh, which I had. And uh, so these are some examples of the 3D models, which are, um, you know, fun. And Moto, okay, so I should say what I'm modeling. I'm modeling Moto, uh, made by Luxology, M-O-D-O. Um, not because of the modeler stuff, because I'm not really crazy about modeling, so it takes me too long at this point, but I love the rendering engine. So the rendering engine and the material indication and the quality of the light is really fantastic. So that's what I enjoy mostly about it. And that's why I started learning it, because I had some models done already uh, by somebody else, and so I can pull them in. Um, but I would model all this stuff. This is all modeled by me from scratch, and then I just clean it off in Photoshop. Um, and so these things will change. It's not the final layout. Get an idea. They're kind of fun. It's all just meant to be fun. I, I like fun vehicles um, that are sort of nonsensical, like this military inspired sports car. Um, right, with ridiculous vertical windshield and you know, exhaust pipes <laughs> that pour right into your window. You know, like um, all the all these silly things. But uh, it makes for fun models, makes for fun renderings, and should hopefully make for a good book. Um, there's a, one of the military, that guy's actually done. Part. Sort of goes with the car, so the same sort of cockpit. And you get the scale there of the guy, and sort of a variation on the other helpless wheel a little bit. And uh, you know, it's got this big hydraulically operated bumper at the front, breaks through things. Again, classic game style. Um, this is a work in progress. Again, lots of, so this, uh, the fun thing about working digitally is sort of doing uh, digital kit bashing. So when I was a kid, we'd all like take uh, plastic rebel models and things and break them all into pieces and then glue them all back together with other models, right, to create some wacky made-up vehicle. And that would follow the direction. And so this sort of thing is the equivalent, but using digital models instead. So I would do, since I'm publishing a book, I need to own all the models, but I don't have time to model everything. But one of my aesthetics is supposed to be salvaged, like this. Um, and the salvage stuff is supposed to use found objects, found real stuff out of a junkyard. And it's like, oh, if I'm releasing real stuff, and there are tons of people who put hours and hours 